The search for Atlantis is at a critical crossroads, and public interest in what Atlantis was and where it was located is not diminishing. When it was hypothesized by the researchers of the documentary Visiting Atlantis that this was matching Plato's description of the fabled land, it recaptured our imagination that we may have found the center, the capital of the ancient empire. Unfortunately though guys, it's exactly that, capturing our imagination, and thus far we still only have very little surviving evidence that Atlantis existed in the first place, let alone where it was. The story seems to be that about 12,500 years ago there was a cataclysmic event that had Earth within its grasp. The cataclysm that came was foreseen by the ancient civilization and therefore they prepared for the inevitable event. There are tales of the Ark being built and there is proof that bunkers were built on the Earth, most notably in modern day Turkey, which would have been part of ancient Mesopotamia. There is little doubt they were preparing for this event. Plato knew about this from his time studying in the ancient libraries of Egypt where it is said that documents from the time of the Atlanteans had survived in fragmentary pieces, and thus from these ancient survival texts, Plato begins to describe of Atlantis and the terrible fate that they endured. Atlantis fell beneath the waves, a once mighty empire, and the rich hatch structure is matching this descriptions from these ancient and now lost accounts. Consider that Atlantis was the name of the Earth before these happenings. Consider that it wasn't an island or a continent that was engulfed. But consider that this may be an account of the deluge taking hold of the Earth. Atlantis equals Earth. Just something to consider, guys. In a recent documentary, the World Alternative Media YouTube channel went on a visit to the site, and his conclusions at the site are bitterly disappointing. It would seem the Maritanian government refused usage of a ground penetrating radar on the Richat site. However, this place is a treasure trove of all things naturally occurring, and if anything significant ever existed here, then the use of technologies will be a major key factor in discovering anything, if indeed anything is here to be discovered. And he does say he will be going back soon to the location and we do of course recommend you guys watch the video. It's important that we don't have a mentality that Atlantis is found here because it just isn't the case. We have hypothesized in the past that Atlantis was in fact global, much like civilization today. Connected, sharing ideas, trading, exploring, and most importantly, documenting everything for future understanding. If you consider that Atlantis was simply the name for the Earth or the name of a global empire, then sites like the Hyperborean location, the underwater ruins at Cuba and Duarca, and indeed countless ruins that are found all over this planet are probably remnants of the Atlantean culture. Anywho, we just wanted to mention the topic and recommend the video to you guys. In other news, did the ancient Egyptians sail to the Black Sea? Wait. Do you hear this? Were the ancient Egyptians able to use reed boats to travel as far as the Black Sea many thousands of years ago? A group of adventurers believe so and will try to prove their theory by embarking on a similar journey, only this time in reverse. In mid-August, a team of two dozen researchers and volunteers from eight countries will set off from the Bulgarian port of Varna hoping the reboat will take them the 700 nautical miles through the Bosporus, the Aegean, and as far as the island of Crete. The team is specifically seeking to prove a hypothesis lent credence by Herodotus, the ancient Greek historian wrote. Egyptians sailed through the Black Sea to get materials that they could not have sourced from the East Mediterranean. We will of course be keeping tabs on this effort of voyage, for sure an interesting one, and should say a lot regarding the ancient trading routes, and of course the forgotten culture of the north. And by the way, if you are interested in learning of a truly epic voyage, then please consider our video on the subject, which we will of course link below. If you are seeking the truth regarding the Atlantis question, then this one is for you. Also guys, since we are in Bulgaria, there has been a nice discovery of an undocumented Ottoman era structure during major street repairs. 
At noon on July 31st, a large number of reporters crowded around Dr. Todor Chobanov, deputy mayor in charge of culture, and the Sofia Regional History Museum's Dr. Alexander Stanev in the narrow confines of Malko Ternovo Street, otherwise known as the shortest street in the capital. There was precipitable disappointment among the journalists writing in the July heat when Dr. Chobanev underlined that contrary to media reports, the wall was not Roman, but late Ottoman, believed to be part of a building possibly from the 18th century. Dr. Stanev said that there appeared to be no documentation about the building, which unlike details of mosque preserved in the record keeping of the time, had passed into history until its very fleeting fame in July 2019. Not exactly a sensational find, but still curious how these types of structures can go undocumented in fairly recent times and in a major capital city, lost to history as if it was never anything in the first place. A clear example of how each culture prefers to remember certain events from the past. And just one last thing before we go guys, 2000 years ago in current day Guatemala, Ancient Mesoamericans had a sharp understanding of magnetism, perhaps even using the force for artistic or spiritual effect. They carved strange heads from rocks that are said to have been struck by lightning. Reporting in the Journal of Archaeological Science earlier this year, scientists from Harvard University explained that the sculptures contained magnetic anomalies on their surfaces. At least 10 of the 11 sculptures have some kind of significant magnetic anomaly. Strangest of all, magnetic mapping has shown that magnetism can only be found in certain distinct areas of the sculptures, such as their belly or cheeks, as if the artisans had an acute awareness of the rock's unusual properties while crafting the figures. This, they argue, is intriguing yet inconclusive evidence that Mesoamerican culture had an earlier knowledge, perhaps even practical use, of magnetism. How did they become so magnetic? Well, no one knows for sure. Perhaps some kind of solar or celestial event occurred that made the magnetization occur. And at other sites like that of Pumapungku, we do see these types of anomalies present here as well. The researchers offer the explanation that the rock most likely obtained its magnetism after becoming struck by lightning while still in the ground. All rocks contain magnetic material, although most of the time they only generate a minuscule magnetic field. However, rock can become more magnetized after becoming struck by a bolt of lightning because after the zapping, the rock begins to cool and minerals like magnetite, hematite, and iron sulfides become aligned with Earth's magnetic field. The cultural significance of the stone sculptures and their magnetic properties remains unclear. However, it's speculated that the attraction was used to express or represent the power of the ruling elite's ancestors. While we might never truly understand the meaning of the stones, they remain a deeply fascinating insight into the depths of knowledge that existed in the Americas before European colonization. In the Old World, there was some documentation on magnetism in the Greek world by the 6th century BC, and the first usable compass wasn't invented until centuries later in China. To us, what's really interesting is that it's a completely independent discovery. There's a perception that the Old World is the advanced world and transferred all this knowledge to the new one. But we are realizing that they knew a lot, and we think this is one more piece of evidence for that. Okay guys, we will leave it at that for the moment. You can let us know what you are thinking, and as always, thank you for watching.